Just a simple thought. The limit of your experience is the limit of your understanding and what is possible. There's some philosophical Hindi schools assume that everything is in the mind, despite all the occult apparatus in the human body, and there are no objective ontologies and entities. The same with the school of... Uh, that assumes that there is a jiva, or a separate genius, separate from the mind. Some deny the existence of jiva. Same with the Western schools. Now, who would believe nowadays, after the scientific revolutions and all that, that spirits exist? Or that you can see them and interact with them? Rarely ever. Even people in the magical business, they think it's uh, archetypes, or the forces of their mind and psychology. What if I told you that if you experience and see spirits and traffic with them as a medium, as an observer, as a learner from the great teachers above and below, you experience the existence of spirits, of the souls, of demons, of various nature spirits of the great spirits and intelligences of the planetary spheres above and of the so-called heavens, or so on, so on. Or demoniacs, and entities. sometimes you may become a demoniac and go quite insane. So, if you speak from this perspective to people who did not experience such things, they take you for an insane, or they listen with interest and go their own place. However, the point is that every philosophy has a starting point. This has an axiom. And when we are philosophizing about things we didn't experience, we go awfully wrong, right? Because it's an act of interpretation, hermeneutics, hermeneian. So, I was astounded to find an array of uh, philosophers in Hindi that actually do not believe in the objective ontologies forces of the gods that they named, for example. Oh, hmm. And even in uh, Greco-Roman times, Lucian, the great atheist of his time. And there were many atheists in Greece and Rome. They didn't believe in gods in the great 12. They didn't. They didn't believe in the world of the spirits. Why? Because they didn't see them. They didn't experience them. There are people that see and experience and they say, hey, this is objective. These things, those wonders are real. And they derive all the philosophy based on this magical perception. And uh, I'm not even trying to convince anyone that those spirits, those forces are objective and they are co-parallel with our mortal world and they can influence our minds, emotions, souls and so on. Our strictly physiological properties. Not always, sometimes. So, for example, when somebody is suffering a insanity or a mental malady, he's redirected to a psychiatrist. And uh, that's not a good idea. But sometimes it's necessary, right? First, modern science, which completely denies the existence of spirits and objectively ontological entities that may interact with you and that may influence your electroconductivity, your biochemical processes, your biopsychology, your mental states, mental affairs, and so on and so on. May, but not always. May, sometimes, but they may. So... Long story short, the idea is to virtualize your imagination so that you can enter a bit of the world of second sight, as clairvoyancy does. And uh, not to be lost in all that, there is another rule that you tend not to create a subject-object dependence, because then you are playing into master-slave relationships. You are just open about it, and you move along with it. Human is not the center of the world. It's not. And after years, you start enjoying this world, this richness, this beauty. Sometimes horrors and nightmares and devastating effects on your nervous system and pains. Sometimes great awes and uh, touching experiences of the divine muses that inspire you to this or that. So, think about it. Thank you.